Welcome to SafeTica 101. In this episode, we will go over the DLP deployment process. There are four steps to the DLP deployment process. First, we must prepare the environment. In order to prepare the environment, we must do three things. Create user groups, check the categories, and create zones. Protection of data is performed in SafeTica DLP. First, we must prepare the environment, and the first step of this is to create the user groups. User groups help us to systemize the protection of data. For this training, we will create a new group and name it designers. And then move the proper users to this group. Now that we've created the user group, let's check the categories. Categories is a database with websites, applications, and file types. It helps to manage the protection of data within Safetica. You can make sure your categories are up to date and even perform an update if needed before continuing. And now step three, create zones. Zones are a name set of external devices, IP addresses, network path, email addresses, websites, and printers. To create a zone, click on Add Zone, then name the zone. For this training, we will go with Design Zone. You also have the option to add a description. Now that we've created the Design Zone, let's add an item. First, let's look at external devices. You can add external devices automatically or manually. If automatic is selected, simply plug in the device and it will show up in the list. If you would like to add devices manually, you can fill in the required information, and the next time a device is plugged into a machine with Safetica installed on it, it will be added to the zone you've created. Now let's add a network path. Put in the server name, and then the folder, and then click Finish. Finally, let's add an email domain the users will be able to send emails to. Click on Add, then Finish. Don't forget to click the check to save your settings. And now we've created a zone. In the next section, we will secure data channels. This will require three steps. Restrict external devices, restrict disk access, and choose whether or not to force users to use encrypted disks. The first part of securing channels is restricting external devices. In this step, we can use the zone that was previously created. We can see the design zone in the list. So now, we can allow any devices that are in this zone while restricting all other external devices. We'll save the configuration, and now let's move on to step two, restrict disk access. In Safetica DLP, you can set network and local paths that users can access. In this training, we will add a network path and go with the same path we used earlier when setting our zone. The last step allows us to force users to use an encrypted disk. SafeTick has the ability to encrypt disks using multiple methods. SafeTica encryption is covered in another training, so we will move on. Analyze data. After securing channels, we analyze the data. There are four steps involved to do this. Create filtering rules, set the data analysis, create data categories, and then tag the data. Safetica can analyze the data on a hard drive and help you determine what sensitive data needs the protection. First, let's create a filtering rule. This helps us find the data that needs to be protected. Click on New Rule and name it. We will name this one Design Filter Rule. Click Next. First, we will add a path where the sensitive data is stored.
In this case, it is on the C drive under the Propicad folder. Let's also add an extension. We will use .sxe to find only design files stored in this folder. Click Next and make sure everything looks good. Now click Finish and save your work. Now we have created filtering rules. The last step is securing data. There are four parts in this process. First, we will create a security point, then set DLP rules, set DLP logging, and then set alerts to notify us when these rules are broken. Now that we've tagged the sensitive data, we must set rules to protect this data. So let's create a policy to determine how the information will be protected. First, we have to name the policy. For this training, we will name this designer's policy. You can set data or application policies. This one is a data policy since we are protecting the data. Now let's configure the policy. Local drives are allowed, and external devices are by zone. We will set the design zone to allow, while every other is denied. Same thing for printers. Network and email. Encrypted drives will be denied, along with cloud storage, screenshots, copying to the clipboard, burning, and virtual printing. Now click Finish. Review your settings and click Save. Now we will set the DLP rules. DLP rules link the data category we created to the security policy we set. Select the data category and then select the security policy. In this case, designer's policy. Now change the policy mode to restrictive to enforce the policy on clients with no exceptions. You can review the logging settings Click Finish, and now when we click Save, the data will be protected on the endpoint clients. You can also set alerts to notify you if any of the DLP rules that were set were broken. Alerts can be sent to you via email or through the Safe to Come Management Console. Alerts are covered in another training, so we will move on. Now let's take a look at the endpoint client and see how the protection works. When we open a file that is tagged, we can see the notification from Saitsuka, alerting us that this file is protected. When we try to take an action like print, Saitsuka does not allow this action. Or, if you try to copy the information inside the application, it is blocked. The same goes for screen capture. Or, if we try to copy the file and move it to another location. For example, a USB drive. The copy is denied because this USB is not on the list of allowed devices, and we can choose another place where sensitive data can be copied. Thanks for watching this episode of Safe Code 101. This training introduced you to some of the many features and capabilities of Safe Code. For more information, please visit our website at corporatearmor.com or call us at 1-877-449. 0458